Hello friends, my name is Daniel Fontenot, and welcome to Jewels of Truth. Thank you for joining us in this uh, short uh, little presentation. Uh, today, I would like to give more proof that the Pope, which the Bible identifies as the man of sin, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, is the Antichrist. Let no man deceive you, Paul the Apostle said, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a, come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And in other words, the coming of Christ is not going to happen before there's a falling away first and the man of sin is And what does this man of sin do? Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, in our last presentation, we identified the fact that the Pope in essence, all the popes, not just the present pope, but all the popes claim to be God on earth. They stand in the place of God to the people of the earth, not just the Catholics, but to the entire earth. So, with that in mind, I'd like to read a portion of a book uh, entitled Ecclesiastical Megalomania by a man named John Robbins. Okay. In his book, Ecclesiastical Megalomania, on pages 194 and 195, he says this. In the judgment of the Roman church state, and yes, the Vatican is, or the Catholic church is a church state. In the judgment of the Roman church state, the United Nations is, at the present time, the likeliest vehicle to achieve the political and economic world unification that the, world, that the Roman church state desires. Okay, so let that sink in. In the judgment of the Roman church state, in the judgment of the papacy, the United Nations, is at the present time the likeliest vehicle to achieve one world government. Now, let me inform some of you who may not, who may not be aware of this fact, but every single man that was involved in the formation of the United Nations was either a socialist or a communist. Okay? The United Nations is a communist organization and it was formed to eventually create a one world government. No man has the right, has the moral right to force a one world government. Let me go on. Pius XII, Pope Pius XII proclaimed that the United Nations ought also to have the right and the power of forestalling all military intervention of one nation state in another, whatever the pretext under which it is affected, and also the right and power of assuming by means of a sufficient police force the safeguarding of order in the state which is threatened. We desire the authority of the United Nations strengthened, especially for e effecting general disarmament, which we have so much at heart. Okay, so in the Pope's eyes, the United Nations should have, should be strengthened for affecting general disarmament. And that would go out, not just, you know, let's not be naive here. 
this would not only affect nuclear weapons, but everything down to a knife. Okay? All methods of self-preservation, self, you know, uh, of protecting oneself should be taken away. The church state has been lavish in its moral support for the United Nations. Lavish it has been. John the, thir the, the, the 23rd referred to the Universal Declaration of Human Rights as, quote, an act of the highest importance performed by the United Nations Organization approved in the General Assembly of December 10th, 1948. Now, let me also just add here briefly, the United Nations has a constitution. Maybe that's what they're talking about when it says the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, okay? They don't believe in human rights. They do not believe in human rights. The constitution of the United Nations, and maybe on a later uh, episode, I will read to you the constitution of the United Nations. It is diametrically opposed. Now, it, it may seem on the surface to be in agreement with our U.S. Constitution. It is diametrically opposed to the United, Na the United States Constitution. Okay? There is no semblance. You know, it's like a train, <clears throat> a train track, may seem in the far distance, those two, those two tracks may be... Uh, joined together, but as it comes nearer to yourself, you see that it's quite wide apart. There is no semblance between the United States Constitution and the United Nations Constitution. Don't, if you ever read it, don't read it superficially. We don't need the United Nations Constitution. But the Pope says it's okay. It should be followed. It is therefore our ardent desire that the United Nations organization in its structure and in its means, this is con continuing on with what the Pope said, it is therefore our ardent desire that the United Nations organization in its structure and, its, and in its means may become ever more equal to the magnitude and nobility of its ranks, of its tasks rather, and may the time come as quickly as possible when every human being will find therein an effective safeguard for the rights which are derived directly from his dignity as a person and which are therefore universal, invi inviolable, and uh, inalienable rights. Okay? Now let's be clear about this. The Pope nor the United Nations believe that our rights are inalienable. In their eyes, our rights come from them. Anne Rand was right when she wrote in 1967, quote, The Catholic Church has never given up the hope to reestablish the medieval union of church and state with a global state and a global theocracy as its ultimate goal. Okay? Those, and I have had communications with people to say, oh, the Catholic Church, the papacy, they don't, they're not going to, you know, become the world leader, and they're not going to crush uh, religious liberty. The Roman Catholic Church wants to come back into power. I'm not talking about individual Catholics. Don't misunderstand me here. There are good honest and decent Catholic people out there that have been deceived by the papacy and by their priests. But let me repeat Anne Rand's statement. The Catholic Church has never given up the hope to reestablish the medieval union of church and state with a global state and a global theocracy as its ultimate goal. The Roman church state is a hybrid. Now, now, this is, okay, so we, we've, this is the end of Anne Rand's statement. So now the writer of this book, uh, John Robbins, states, The Roman church state is a hybrid, a monster of ecclesiastical and political power. 
its political thought is totalitarian. And whenever it has had the opportunity to apply its principles, the result has been bloody repression. If during the last 30 years it has softened its assertions of full, supreme, and irresponsible power, and has murdered fewer people than before, such changes in behavior are not due to a change in its ideas, but to a change in its circumstances. Lord Acton noted a century ago that it was only when the Roman Church faced public opinion that disapproved of church-state-sanctioned murder that it slowed its persecutions and attempted to speak with a voice less bloodthirsty. The Roman church state in the 20th century, however, is an institution recovering from a mortal wound. That mortal wound it received in 1798 when one of Napoleon's generals, Berthier, took the Pope captive and sent him into exile, and there the power, the temporal power, the political power of the papacy ended. So when the writer of this book says the Roman church state in the 20th century, however, is an institution recovering from a mortal wound, whether he realizes it or not, that mortal wound happened in 1798, February of 1798 to be exact. If and when it regains its full power and authority, it will impose a regime more sinister than any the planet has yet seen. This is just one of the reasons why I say that The papacy is the man of sin of Second Thessalonians chapter 2. And why I say that the, the Pope is Antichrist. Martin Luther, the great reformer, the great Protestant reformer, came, came out of the Catholic Church. And I say this to Lutherans also, go back to your father as it were, the teachings of Martin Luther, whom you claim to follow. Go back to his teachings and recognize that the papacy is the man of sin. It is the Antichrist, a Bible prophecy. Thank you for joining us today. And we hope that this presentation has been a help to everyone who is honest those who are searching for truth as for hidden treasure. It makes a difference what you believe about this, dear people. It's a matter of life and death. It is salvational. And if you agree with this presentation, then by all means tap that like button at the bottom of this, of this video. And um, <clears throat> if you have any questions or comments, then feel free to post them at the bottom of this video also. Thank you for joining us. Have a good day.